Hello and welcome to the Nylon 9 podcast. It is episode 228 of the Nylon 9 podcast and it's myself, Niall, and Andrea Cleary here, of course. Hello, Niall. It's a storm edition. <laughs> There's always an extra beat when you say hello. Always an extra beat. I know. I, I'm not quite, I just, yeah, I'll, I'll be more confident. Hello, Niall. <laughs> storms uh, are coming. Storms are coming. Uh, storms here. Yeah. Storm Z is here. Storm it's Agnes. outside. Uh, Storm, Storm Agnes. Yeah, we're we're recording on the morning of the 27th of September. Uh, but yes, it is the best of the month. Our monthly look at music that we love. Uh, basically chatting about albums and songs that we love. Mostly albums this month, I believe. We're we're going for mm-hmm. the album buzz. There was a lot of albums in September. There's loads I didn't I actually have enjoyed and haven't got to yet. So that's a good sign. Yeah. That is a good sign. There is actually, as I noted on uh, the website this week, there is quite a lot of Irish albums to come this year. Have you noticed that? I haven't because I haven't looked at your excellent new well feature. On it's the a, website. Yeah, basically, why I've been keeping a, a list peek? privately for a while. And I was like, why don't I just put this up on the website? Because it makes more sense. Like, mm-hmm. we're in the last week of September. We're uh, about to enter, what? Q, Q4. We're about to enter Q4. Q4. And in Q4 of this year, uh, in terms of Irish albums, we've got Jape album, Super Action Bonus Party album coming out this week. We have the likes of CMAT, Mary Wallopers, uh, Tandem Felix. Oxen, Kojak, The Scratch, Rachel Lavelle, David Holmes, John Francis Flynn, all coming before the end of the year. That's a lot of albums. A lot of albums. That's a lot. So yeah, lots to lots to lots to come in the next few months. But we're going to talk about what happened in in uh, September in our ears. In our ears, what happened is a lot of albums. So um, will we kick it off with a first? My first choice. Let's go with a, so this is the first album. You will know this voice from uh, the project Salt. Um, Her name is Cleo Soul, an artist who has been releasing uh, uh, solo albums for a while now. And that is the British singer Cleo Soul. And this is her third full length album. It's called Heaven, uh, released on Forever Living Originals, which is also home to Salt. So, yeah, if you like Salt, this is a slightly different vibe, but you'll recognize the voice here. This is uh, Cleo Soul and a song called Airplane. Here you will fly again, no fear, I like an airplane. You never fell before. Well, people never have a say when So that's Cleo Soul, song called Airplane from the album Heaven, her third solo album. That's lovely. Yeah, really nice. It's very gentle. It's really very nice. intimate compared to the music of Salt. It's much more personal in terms of lyrics. Uh, um, it's a combination of piano and guitar. And again, it's, it's produced by Inflow, the uh, producer of Salt, who I believe is actually Cleo Soul's uh, partner as well. So um, nine tracks on it. It's very gentle, very quiet. I really enjoyed it. Uh, there's quite a lot of different like touches of of music here. There's like some kind of neo soul stuff. There's seventy soul, jazzy stuff. Also some sixties folk music as well. Like that's what kind of airplane sounds a bit like to me as well. Mm. Kitty Empire and the Guardian says, but while Salt's more rhythmic forward music comes with a distinct political edge, the music of Saul of Saul can be heard as the yin aspect to Salt's outgoing yang her work is cool dreamy down tempo inward facing and often consolatory so that is a, an example of cleo so let's play another bit of a song called go baby Lost your you 
So Go Baby Heaven is the album very well worth checking out if you like that kind of sound and I think if you're a fan of Salt and there are 11 albums that they've released so far you'll like that <laughs> so yeah Excellent. 14 albums um, from two different people from the same people basically to check out include, and that's not including any of the albums that Inflow has done for Little Sims or, or Michael Kiwanuka or anything like that very prolific people there prolific people um Less prolific, but probably going to be. Uh, my first choice for an album this month is the second album from Olivia Rodrigo, former Disney darling, current, probably like best place to be the next biggest pop star in the world. Like she's already huge, but yeah, based on, you know, the two albums that she's released so far, I'm like, oh, she could be Taylor Swift big. Like she could be yeah. like... Uh, real real big yeah Mm. so the second album is called guts um probably pop album of the year for me i i don't keep extremely up to date with like pop music but this is like it's certainly one of the biggest albums of the year um it's the pop album that's most kind of grabbed me this year i really 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 like olivia rodrigo i just i think she's very like reflexive in her sound she's willing to kind of take i don't know if there's so much risks but do something a little bit different with a pop sound um and so i've chosen two songs from the album that are technically album tracks i think uh, even though both of them are quite big on tiktok so they kind of feel like they're singles but um the first one is the opening track from the album called all american bitch So it's all American bitch. I, I I really, really love that song. I think it's a really um it's a really nice take on the sort of like I'm not a Disney girl anymore, I'm not a little girl anymore, without going the kind of the already kind of what well treaded, well trodden path of um sort of sexing yourself up and so on, like like Miley Cyrus and um not that I I, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with taking that track, but this is just a, a a different way of doing it and kind of leaning into the idea that she's that she's perfect and that she never gets angry and she's pretty when she cries and so on and, and I think and I also just think it's it's a jam I love the kind of the the interplay between like the very soft vibe of the verses and then the kind of like big rock chorus I think it works really really well because she has this kind of duality in her voice she can be very very sweet and her her kind of very soft spoken vocals are a joy to listen to, and she's also able to like belt things out. So it's nice to see that kind of um, uh, like dynamic vocal work on on a really like just straightforward, brilliant pop song. Um, and then the other track I wanted to choose was a song that when I played it for Harry, he said it reminded him of um, what's that song? Is it like, what What am I doing drinking in L.A.? What's that song oh, called? Oh, Brand Van 3000, drinking in L.A. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah, he said it um, reminds him of that and he loves it. And it's his favorite song on the album because it reminds him of that song. <laughs> uh, so this song is called Get Him Back! Exclamation point. Yeah, it's nice. It's pop music with a personality. It's pop music, like yeah. doing things that, um, you know, like obviously mining from the past, but doing in a way that feels like very current has like, I think it has just has a personality in spades, really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And like, I mean, there's that's only two songs from the album, but there's also, I think, uh, Vampire, which was out before, which is one of the singles before the album was released. I think that 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 song really it really connected with me when I listened to it within the album because you see it as kind of the driver's license of the mm, album. Yeah. It's like a a ballad, big vocals, quite slow to start, but I think she's really elevated what she's doing with a ballad. Like the the final third of that song just decides to absolutely like go and run, and it just feels so like euphoric and um and just kind of like. Like kind of teen joy and teen anger and teen sorrow. I think she really taps into like a kind of an adolescent sort of female rage that is really, really like intelligently um, portrayed and playful. And it just, yeah, I don't know. We're we're having this kind of big moment in culture at the minute with like, you know, girl dinner and girl maths God, and yeah. girlhood. I think it's gone a bit too of, far, is it not? <laughs> Yeah, everything I is girl know. everything I mean, I think, like everything is yeah like- well i i was reading i i can't remember who who wrote it or where i saw it or whether or not it was in a tiktok or what but i saw somebody make a really really good point about how womanhood has become so politicized um with you know conversations ar- around like trans people and turfs you know be- being really protective of the idea of of a uh, of a woman so there's this other sort of like there's a bit of a backlash towards it where girl girlness is being ce- celebrated and like if, if you look at how people were talking about like Jeremy Strong in Succession or Pedro Pascal they were calling them like baby girl so girlness isn't something that's even like you know defined by um what your sex is it's just a feeling so i don't know once i started thinking about it like that i was like i actually quite like the 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 resurgence of like an awareness that girlhood is something that is um celebratory but also like deeply deeply um troubling to go through you know and i think that olivia rodrigo's guts is definitely like should be entered into that like the canon of the conversation that we're having around girlhood at the minute because it's just it it just does it so so well like there's a song on it called ballad of a homeschool girl which is also just like absolutely brilliant and it's about being embarrassing and it's about like messing things up and not saying the right thing all the time and just you know the idea of like committing social suicide every time you go out because you don't know how to act and like your body's weird and stuff so yeah I just really really love this album I love it more than Sour and I really really liked Sour but there's more songs on this that I really like I don't think there's a bad song on it and I think the best songs on it are like by far some of the best songs of the year I just love Olivia Rodrigo. I think she's great. <laughs> yeah. Would you go to the gig now or do you? would you feel too old? I would, but I don't know if I can go through another Ticketmaster. Um, if anyone wants to send me, that would be lovely. <laughs> and I'll, I'll write a review. But um, I don't know if I can go through, you know, I don't know if I've said it on air, but that, that 1975 week when I tried four times to get tickets to see them in London, Manchester or Glasgow. Um, yeah. That was a tough week for me. I think I need to take a break from stressful ticket masters. No, you could, you could also try the guest list route. Just saying. Just saying. 
That's that's what I'm saying. If someone wants to send me, if someone wants to invite me, you can just to go, go and witness it. Just go. <laughs> I'm more I'm more than happy to be, do whatever you need. You know. I don't know what the term would be if it was a TikTok meme, but like you know, be gig girl. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, gig go. girl, girl gigs, girl gigs, <laughs> go, girl gigs, absolutely. Ask yes. for that guest list. <laughs> <laughs> That's girl gigging is getting guest list. Speaking guest of, list. Um, I did you see? I I was on prime time last week. Did you see that? <laughs> no, I I haven't seen it. It's so funny. I tell I, me. Yeah, uh, I just no, I just did a little bit to camera about ticketing and uh, gigs, mm-hmm. mostly about the the advance kind of. Um, uh, mechanisms that are in place now to like the waiting rooms and the pre-sales and the registrations. There was nothing too, mm. nothing too uh, taxing. They should in have interviewed of- me. Andrea Cleary tried four times to get tickets for the 1975 and didn't. And then it pans to me and I'm crying. Well, what it did pan to was uh, people who were at the Shania Twain gig that evening. And it was so funny because mm. like everybody they interviewed was from the North. Everyone. It was so funny. Really? I'm one person, one, I think there was one lad from Dublin and everyone else was from the North and they all had uh, uh, like Stetsons on. <laughs> it was so funny. I, was like, I didn't oh, know okay. that Shania Twain gig was happening Two until nights. I saw it. Two on, nights. Yeah, on Louise Bruton's story. And I was like, Sorry, I would have absolutely loved to go to see Shania Twain. I love her. She was, I think, like for a time when I was maybe eight or seven, like my favorite singer. Yeah. <laughs> like I listened to my mom's Shania Twain albums. Absolutely loved her. Oh, well. well there you go. You missed Next out time. two nights. I know. Uh, Shania yeah. Twain, who famously has a Newbridge uh, ancestral connection. <laughs> there you go. Who knew? Well, they found out recently. Uh, there was a Leicester Reader piece about it. And one of the local councillors was like trying to get a statue of Shania Twain put up. <laughs> it's worth Absolutely. having a look at. Hey, let me see if I can find I it actually. Shania Twain. Uh, Do they Bridge. have a like a mock up of the statue? Like a what? No, an no. Idea it was just it a proposal. Like? <laughs> I'll read it out to you. Okay. Uh, the award winning country singer Shania Twain may well have her roots in Newbridge, according to the Newbridge mayor. Mayor Damien Molyneux announced the revelation at this month's Newbridge Town Council meeting. Uh, Shania Twain's granny was from Newbridge, he said. I think her name was Pierce. Councillors failed to comment on the significance of the matter and moved swiftly on <laughs> after it was agreed it could be looked into. <laughs> I'm going to say something now, right? I'm going to say something and it's going to be controversial. It's our fault that Americans think they're Irish when it's their, you know, eight generations back. Someone got on a boat and went to New York. That's our fault. Look, look at what we do to promote this. We're like, oh, Shania Twain's Irish. She's not Irish, right? But, you know. Her maternal grandmother is called Eileen Pearson. Did indeed emigrate from Newbridge. (sighs) Great. But if Shania Twain wasn't a famous person, And she was like, I'm Irish. Like if she came over and she was like, I'm Irish because my grandmother, people roll their eyes at people when they do that. And I think we shouldn't. It's our fault. It's our fault that we do that. We either accept that everyone is Irish or we don't claim any celebrities. It is gas when you go over to America though and they're like, I'm three fifths Irish. And it's like, how does that work? I know, (laughs) I know. But it, it must be, it must be mad to live in a country where like, like almost everybody is immigrants like you yeah it's I, I guess it's kind of fair like if you don't have your own culture that is the culture anyway I'm enough about America face. sorry let's come back to <laughs> yeah. Ireland um, and yes, a lovely band who released their second album it's uh, their first album was called Small Talk and this one's called Dream Big this is Soda Blonde with Boys Tell me when you 
That is Soda Blonde, of course. Their second album was released in September. Um, I mean, if you know, I don't think we ever had them on the podcast, have we? We ever had them on the no, chat? No, we should. Yeah, um, we should indeed. But um, I've had a nice chat Come with on, guys. Bay O'Rourke before at a gig we did, um, a live stream gig we did. Uh, really nice. Uh, I've chatted to her for an interview before. We had a lovely, it was actually the first, first interview that I did that was in person during the COVID stuff right yeah, sat on yeah. south william street and had a coffee yeah Lovely. i think they're a really interesting example of what an irish band can be obviously four of them were in uh, little green cars previously and then they restarted reignited as um soda blonde and uh first album was really good i think fay o'rourke's voice is just something i can mm-hmm. uh, really i think she's one of the best singers in this country um, just yeah. a beautiful singer and I think they're getting to a point now where obviously you know the first album was very much about you know navigating your 20s and navigating your the world and it feels a bit more nuanced now in terms of lyrics there's a lot uh, more um, nuance in in those uh, words now and I think uh, I think they're more they're more comfortable in a way that isn't uh, settling um, for what they mm. do I think there's there's some surprises on this album as well in terms of like how a there's I mean they're not a guitar band they're not a synth pop band they're a bit of everything they mm. sometimes remind me of Fleetwood Mac and how they he, she sings and how they operate together but I just think they're doing their own thing and I think they're a great band they're a really good band um mm. one that also as well I think recently have gone independent as well so uh, interesting to note that as well. I think they were previous on Glass Note Records in their previous band. It is hard, like it is like it's hard to navigate these things uh, as a as a touring and working like full time band. They have started a member Soda Blonde Members Club. Um, so if you basically are looking for, it's essentially their uh, version of Patreon. You can support them from a five or a month. Yeah. And I they, think it's a really good idea yeah, for bands to do that. Absolutely. And like they're running I, it themselves on their own website. A lot of artists have like newsletters and stuff now as well that you can subscribe to. And um, like Sla- Slaughter Beach Dog, who I kind of forgot to include this month. So I might next month um, just realize I forgot to include him. But um, he he sends out a newsletter with kind of like demos or like uh, ideas that he's working on and stuff. And I think it's a really cool way to be able to support an artist but also for an artist to kind of maintain a connection with their audience so yeah, yeah I think that's cool I think every band should have a, mem- a mailing list something that they can control yeah. themselves because look what happens um, Instagram you're you have to, if you're at the mercy of, of of Elon Musk or whoever it is in, yeah. Yeah, or Zuckerberg like you they do not let you uh, put in links easily <laughs> like I mean Twitter no. does but like the algorithm changes that and and visibility and shows you the now uh, X is showing you the most divisive stuff and the most um, difficult stuff or maybe the most uh, yeah. the loudest stuff in the room and with Instagram if you're not doing video if you're not having your face in it if you're not blah 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 yeah. like there's a broadcast channel thing that they've started this week which has been really interesting um, they've allowed in Ireland so I've started a, a 9 or 9 broadcast channel literally just to mm. be able to share it's like a WhatsApp uh, group on on Instagram in the in the messages that you can just literally put the the messages in I'm using it for sharing breaking kind of gig news stuff but it's just like mm. you're at the mercy of whoever decides to change the algorithm or how the algorithm works. So yeah. always get a mailing list. Anyway. And it's also things like, you know, that that um that algorithm change will change without you knowing it. Like yeah. you're you constantly know, one week it, you're constantly it, it peddling like, and treading oh, water. You should do 10 second videos and the next week it's like, oh no, three minute videos with your face in it are working well or videos with text don't go yeah don't go graphics well anymore bad and, you know all this kind of stuff yeah, it's like you're constantly yeah, navigating it's this so thing so hard you end up it's really hard to navigate things i've been like. trying to think about this recently like i spent a lot of time making content for instagram and you're like well i actually want people to visit the website because that's where it all is so i'm trying to prioritize know, that yeah, yeah. these days as opposed to doing less um instagram content but it is t- hard because mm. like you have to get people in and it's like trying mm. to build up through google and all that kind of stuff you know so anyway yeah. that's uh n- not to the point of how good Soda Blonde are, but it does speak to, you know, we have a Patreon as we, when we mention every week, patreon.com forward slash 909. 
communities of people are really important. Communities of people around bands yeah. and around platforms like ourselves uh, make it what it is. Because if they, if they don't exist, then um, you could you feel like you're shouting into a void. So it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wish Soul of Blonde best of luck with the album and their members club and all their upcoming activity. Let's hear a bit of a song called Bad Machine from the album. Andrea, do you like karaoke? Yes. <laughs> that was very, very gently I do. spoken. I do like karaoke. My karaoke song is Copacabana. Oh, that's a good um, one. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a great song. Um, I don't know if I said this in the podcast or not, but I, I did Cop- Copacabana at a hen party during the summer. Um, and it had a, what was it? A 24 bar instrumental break in the middle <laughs> that I just didn't know about. And because you know the way it comes up, like instrumental, like, twenty four like bars. The bit- no, no, no. I think it it, it might have been like forty eight bars. It was something mad, and it a a, a, a limbo competition started wow. and ended yeah. in just the instrumental break wow. of that song at yeah. this hen party. So, uh, yeah, that's my that's my karaoke song. But soccer mommy's karaoke songs come from a wide range of artists. So soccer mommy, uh, Sophie Allison, a regular. Um, kind of reference on this podcast especially from my end i really 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 like her um she's released this month an ep of five covers uh pavements here cheryl crow's soak up the sun dagger by slow dive i'm only me when i'm with you by taylor swift and lose my religion by orem um and they're all great and they all kind of sound like they could be her own songs maybe with the exception of the orem one just because it's so ubiquitous um very atmospheric and stylish and subdued um i've chosen uh to play soak up the sun uh because i think i i posted this on blue sky this morning but between boy genius releasing not strong enough which is a kind of a an answer to cheryl crow's song strong enough and now soccer mommy releasing soak up the sun are we in for a cheryl uh i nearly said cheryl cole <laughs> are, are we in for a revival of um Cheryl Crow and uh, for us all to revisit her as the the kind of star that she is slash was. Um, so yeah, this is Soak Up the Sun, uh, cover of Cheryl Crow by Soccer Mommy. Banger. Um, I'd never really noticed the, I th- it, maybe it's just this song, but the similarities between Soccer Mommy and Sorka Richardson. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to hear the two of them on, on a track together. Like there is, there is a kind of a similarity. Um, and obviously Sorka Richardson did a cover of The Killers album, Hot Fuss. Um, in full. Which was amazing. Yeah. In full and was amazing. And I nearly cried on the podcast when um, 
when I didn't get a copy and they were sold out, but then she very kindly sent me one. So thank you, Sorka. But anyway, back to Soccer Mommy. Um, yeah, it's just like she she has such a I, I feel like she flies un, under the radar a little bit. Like I know she's really well liked, but I think maybe she gets lost in the kind of the, you know, modern female so- singer songwriter sort of like Phoebe Bridgers, like, you know, yeah, she's probably iceberg. second tier of that. Is she like? Yeah, yeah, she gets kind of tier, lost in there, but I, a tiered yeah, cake of sad indie she, rock. Exactly. Or one of those, you know, those iceberg things where you have like yeah, the yeah, top yeah. and then there's like That's under better. the uh, un, under the water. But like her her album Color Theory, which came out in 2020, I really, really loved that album. And I thought it was a very um, it was a great it just had a very like she has a very distinct sound. Um, and I think that carries through over into these covers as well. Here's her cover of Here by Pavement, which I really, really love. And of course, Soccer Mommy was in uh, Dublin last weekend, supporting the national. She was, she was, yeah. Which I didn't go to. No, I didn't. Um, but I am listening to the national um, album this week for well, what do you make Arena of it? on Friday. So it's like it's it, the national. I I liked it, but I'm also like I hate to be the yeah. It's kind of like it feels like diminishing returns. It's like I like this, mm. but also I won't go back to it. Um, yeah, is how I feel about the, it. I'm like, well, oh. that's kind of generally how I feel about the national. Like while I'm listening to them, I'm like, yeah, this is really good. I'm really enjoying this. Like, but I, there's very few situations in which I'm like in the mood to listen to. Certainly, like their kind of most recent albums. But I also think they've got like some incredible songs. So I don't know. I still need to sort of like figure out where where I sit with it. I've only listened to it maybe two or three times. Um, yeah. But I do like it. While it's on, I like it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, um, what is it? Karaoke, karaoke Night? Karaoke uh, Night. The Soccer Mommy. Karaoke Night by Soccer Mommy. Um, definitely check it out. The other covers are great as well. Um, and yeah, those are just my two favorites. But there's five tracks there for people to dive into. Okay, lovely. I thought I'd pick a song that I um, I will say I discovered it last week. I've sent it, of course, but um, you know, discovered it in my inbox. Um, mm-hmm. And it got me quite excited about a new talent from Ireland, uh, from Kilkenny specifically, um, I didn't really get any feedback about it, so I want to include it here because I think maybe I know people read it, but I don't know what they think of it. Uh, I think it's a superb debut okay. for a teenage artist. This is a song from Annika Kilkenny, Anika Kilkenny, called Look Mom, I Made It. I think it kind of fits into Olivia Rodrigo's world a little bit. Let's have a listen to okay. Look Mom, I Made I'm It. You don't understand Depth of the strength found within my mental Or the violence it took to become this gentle It's clear to me now that it wasn't just all in my head You will never get the time that it took to believe that I'll make it All the rock bottoms that forced me to cave in It's clear to me now that I needed myself as a friend Standing on cliff sides, admire the view Scream at indifference like it has a clue Over my shoulder I whisper to you Something I'm proud to admit Look mom, I made Count the 
hours I've spent sat in quiet resentment Or the hollow it took to regain my center And it's clear to me now that I'm stained with the tears I have bled I'm shaking hands with the shaking run too Cutting all ties with the people I knew Pity my mirror won't let me reach through it all of this cold makes me sick, but despite never Hey, that's Annika Kilkenny song is Look Mom I Made It I just thought it was a really sweet song very well written it's absolutely uh, lovely gorgeous orchestral stuff going on and uh, yeah I just think it needs a bit more of a bit more of a um, push for people to hear it because I think it's really really absolutely. lovely absolutely and uh, some lovely lyrics on it as well um, so Annika Kilkenny is actually from Kilkenny <laughs> um, and Good. Uh, this Makes is her sense. debut single um, it's released on Tin Pot Records, who I think are um, UK-based um, kind of indie. Who else is on Tin Pot? Oh, Sammy Copley as well. So um, you might know Sammy Copley, uh, Irish artist, um, singer-songwriter as well. Um, I just think this is really lovely and needs a bit more time for people to hear it. Um, so, mm. And like that lovely orchestral stuff really, really, really uh, stands out to me. Um, a superb debut song. That's it. So I'll be keeping an yeah. eye on what's going on here. Uh, Annika Kenny has been sharing songs with TikTok in the last year, like doing what most people do when they start out now is like doing covers and on YouTube and TikTok and uh, has been developing a following there. This is her debut song, like solo written song. Uh, learned the piano from her aunt and soon began writing songs, going on to win first place at a regional talent competition. You. Yay. Um, Congratulations. There's definitely a bit of an American kind of vocal voice happening here. Stated mm -hmm. influences include uh, American artists Lizzie McAlpine and Emily Bear. Um, she says, I wrote, look, mom, I made it as a way of leaving what's passed behind me while also being content with that. It's a tribute to the moments that are more difficult than others and a farewell to the tunnel vision experienced during these times. It was really important to me to include my mom in the artwork because she is my rock and always has been since I was little. Love you too, dad. This song is for her and every mom that loves largely. Look, mom, I made it as a deep breath after chaos and I hope it acts the same for the listener. So yeah, Annika Kilkenny um, wrote a post about this song uh, during the month of September. So do have a look and uh, yeah. I just think it was worth including here. A nice, nice, a nice new song that I hadn't seen really featured anywhere else. So uh, yeah. that, yeah, that sounds absolutely gorgeous. I'm definitely going to keep an eye on what she's doing. Would definitely not be out of place on that Olivia Rodrigo record. That song. Yeah. 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 Um, nice. yeah it's lovely. Okay. So my next choice is the land is inhospitable. And so are we by Mitski, which I was really, really looking forward to. Um, this album and it didn't disappoint it actually exceeded my expectations for what she was going to do next after laurel hell uh it's produced by drew erickson who also produced father john misty's chloe in the next 20th century and white blood's um most recent album the name of which i can't remember um so a very kind of cinematic kind of like old Hollywood sort of sound that Mitski kind of takes on board, but not kind of fully to the extent that Father John Misty did. Um, and yeah, I don't know if it's like, a, a if I'd categorize it as like a return to form, but it, it's kind of just more of a, a yet another new direction for Mitski. Like it's quite mature. Those who didn't like Laurel Hell will probably breathe a sigh of relief with this my hand album um yeah yeah she she's definitely re returned to the kind of the more melancholic melodies songwriting is a bit more straightforward but the sound of it kind of still evokes that kind of like loneliness that was definitely present in in certainly her earlier albums less pop than um oh what's her big album um oh the one with nobody on um, be the cowboy. Uh, be the cowboy. Um, less pop than that, but kind of maybe a bit more glamour. Um, so yeah, I really, really like it. I've chosen two tracks from it. Um, the first being "My Love, Mine, All Mine."
Yeah, that was the song that stood out to me as well when I on yeah. release day. It sounds like a standard, you know, like it sounds um it sounds like it's from another another century. Like it's it's a really, really beautiful song. I think her her vocals are are beautiful on it as well. And I love the production. I love how it kind of it sounds like you're in the room with with the band and with her. Um the other song I chose from it is I Don't Like My Mind. I love the intensity of this album in terms of those vocals that are joining the uh, choir, which I, I didn't quite get. There's like two choirs recorded in different places, but like add up yeah. to they did they include them together? Is that what happens? I'm not sure. Clear. It was I like, haven't actually were, looked into that. One I was know. recorded in like Nashville or something, and then the other was recorded mm-hmm. in LA. And I was like, there's a twelve piece in Nashville and there's five piece one or the other. I can't remember which one it is. I must just yeah. check here. But I just doubled up in the in the track. Yeah, I was wondering, is it like, are they all together? Because it does say mm. like 17 piece choir or something at some point. I was like, oh, OK, grand. Yeah, <laughs> I meant to check that or like to, to see if I could actually figure out who's done what exactly. What was going on there? Yeah, yeah. yeah they might have just doubled up on the on the you know on the track or something but um but yeah look if you're someone who kind of dropped off with laurel hell i'd definitely say like give this a listen if you're someone who stuck with laurel hell you'll you'll still you'll still really love this it's it's a it's a mature mitski but you know she's still so great with those like yeah. those images like in that song there she's talking about like i ate a cake a whole cake and you know just those sort of like like images of like desperation and loneliness that she's so good at conjuring in all of her music um yeah i think it's it's really really it's a really strong album from mitski yeah great um yeah very good i would agree with that very good all right time for some hip-hop now um there has been quite a lot of um well the alchemist the producer is uh being quite prolific at the moment you may know about the earl sweatshirt collaborative album he's made um that was released on a blockchain platform um called wadir but i'm not going to talk about that because it's not actually officially out yet it, that is officially out, i think on streaming on october 6th so maybe we'll uh, revisit that but for now i want to talk about another album the alchemist is involved in with uh wiki uh one of my favorite new york rappers and uh, a rapper called mike the album is called faith is a rock and here is a bit of a song called scribble jam Get me something ballin' to eat It was all so sweet That's what I see when I toss in my sleep A morning greet Me with a horrible feet Get up off of my feet Poured in me Try and show another port of me Not just my awful defeat Even if I'm who's always hoarding me Causing my grief to fall from my peak Lost by the sea Poor walking Young Jimmy Dormity So why mommy keep calling me A little Sean Connery Can't keep a little warms off of me me. Can't figure what she saw in me when the flaws is all I see. Breathing faster and living slowly. I keep looking back, scribbling goals. I can see the tats just cause I've been so lonely. I need to practice to speech remote. Breathing faster and living slowly. So yeah, the album's called Fate is a Rock, just uh, quietly released last Friday. Um, as I said, um, it's actually more about, like, the, as you can hear there, just the samples aren't really, it's not really about beats a lot of the time on this album. It's about, like, mood and vibe. And, like, some of those tracks are just completely don't have any beats. And uh, and it works really well. It kind of puts it in this, like, weird beatless 
kind of universe that kind of allows the rappers to kind of do what they want. And as I said, Wiki is one of my favorite um, New York rappers. Always really good. I love his like weird nasal tone. He's he's quite prolific as well. He played here recently in the summer. And um, they previously did a three song EP uh, last year, I think. And uh, but this is kind of the full length version. Really like it. Um, I like the way just the samples work and. Yeah, it's it's the Earl uh, Earl Sweatshirt and the Alchemist are touring the Voix Dear album in the US, but I went with this one. I think don't sleep on it. I think it's more pensive and dreamlike. Uh, here's the opening track called Stargate. Thing I like to do besides rolling up and writing two, I'm rightfully ruled. You try and be the boldest one. If you hold your tongue, you'll get cycled through. Left out to dry, your pride will prune, you will aware. Y'all are well aware of where I spent my formative years sipping 40s at the 40th pier. Getting the groggy, my body impaired. I swear, everything was foggy for years. Poured the back, wash out the glass, saw it all clear. I'm in my thoughts. You could apply for them centuries full of long face. I need a charm. I need a strong break. I'm still involved with niggas who with me long way. You niggas soft, niggas know what I'm Yeah, on. Stargate from Fate is a Rock from Mike, Wiki, and The Alchemist. A uh, really good rap album. I enjoyed this month. Excellent. I think, uh, are we on to my last one? Uh, well, you got two. You got an old one and and, uh, and your last one. Oh yeah, I've got my my golden oldie. Uh, <laughs> but before that, I have sorry, I do have a cat on my lap at the minute. Let me just take, take all the time much. you need to settle the cat. <laughs> thank you very much, Aria. Um, yeah, a song by uh, an English singer songwriter, Holly Humberstone, who I actually only I only heard this song yesterday. She has four songs out uh, the, uh, ahead of her debut. Um, album which will be out in October but she's an English singer songwriter she won the Rising Star Brit Award in 2022 she played the BBC introducing stage at Glastonbury uh, I think there's something of kind of Caroline Polachek or uh, a little bit of Nalufri Anya on this track um, and it's also just a great pop song so yeah this is called Into Your Room by Holly Humberstone So don't drive but don't you leave a light then you don't know how much I need you Yeah, I feel the way and you leave me so discretion me I hate to think how bad I treated you That's Holly Humberstone, Into Your Room. Just a song that I really like. I haven't listened to the three other songs that are from the upcoming record, but I just think that's a really, it's a really strong song. It's very sweet. I like the lyrics in it. They're they're kind of playful. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I can hear a little bit of Caroline Polachek there. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on her album next month for sure. Yeah, so she had a, an album last year uh, called oh, Can You Afford she? to Lose Me? Uh, and there you go. does she have some like 1975 origin story kind of thing was she on oh, Dirty Hit or something gosh. like that early on I oh, haven't always had that impression but maybe I'm completely wrong with let that. me see um, let anyway. me see Holly Holmes from the 1975 I always thought there was some connection there oh, there's, what, what song is a collaboration with Matty oh my god maybe that's it for you to hear this. sleep tight which oh, he's on a track, was set to arrive on April 29th. I will be listening to that and I will report back next week. Um, I yeah. have some bad okay, news for you, Andrea. Some bad breaking news what? for you. Um, the 1975 are going on indef- indefinite hiatus from shows after the current tour ends. But you know what? That probably means about two weeks in their world. No, I knew I knew there'd be a really long break after those shows. Yeah, they're because... really hammering those shows, aren't they? Big yeah, time. like, and they sh- they should take a break, but they need to and I break. think there's talk of a Matty solo project and also a George solo project. So they're never going to go gonna away for- either way. No, look, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone has word on a ticket to any of the UK shows, I don't care which one it is, please get in touch. Please tell me, um, because I really want to go. Yeah, that's it. 
just just get in touch with me. Why not? Um, yeah. And also, yeah, I think a, a, a break would be good. A break it from would, the news it cycle. Would be good. You yeah. know, yeah. go and go and have a sleep, Matty. Indeed. For God's sake. I have picked a uh, an album and a song for uh, so it's an album really. It's an album from a, a Leitrim artist, a Leitrim based artist called uh, Natalia Bayless, um, who is a composer, sonic artist, musician. The album is called Mermaids. Um, it was released on September 1st. It's inspired by a keyboard, a CRB Electronica Ancona keyboard salvaged from a Leitrim recycling center and also an old family photo of her mother and two friends, which is also the cover of the record. Um, I'm going to play a song called Float in Fog and Feathers. It's the opening track from the album. Very much. Actually, I was in Leitrim this month and I did listen to this album on one fine evening in uh, outside when the weather was still nice and it was really really lovely and um, so here's a float in fog and feathers <laughs> As you can imagine, it's fairly ambient and uh, meandering in, in a lovely way. So that's Natalia Bayless. Uh, the album is called Mermaids. That's a float in fog and feathers. I think um, you can go and listen to an interview with Natalia with uh, the point of everything from a recent episode as well. I think uh, uh, Owen has chatted to her recently about some of her work. And yeah, that album is available on Bandcamp. Very much uh, recommended, uh, and as I would say, the point of everything doing great work in terms of interviewing Irish artists. Something that we've yeah. kind of dropped off a bit with li- lately, but that's okay. Um, Owen's there doing the good work. Yeah, Autremond, a great album from them, released this month that I didn't get a chance to to uh, recommend. A Litany of Failures, Volume Four, that was something I was listening to this week. Really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. My Sophia, Bridget Maypower, Ezra Williams, um, loads of people that he's been talking to. Crea. Guida Barra, Anna Zanker, and Natalia Bayless, including. So loads of people that the point of everything is talked about. So shout out to Owen for keeping his podcast lit and going. Uh, well, fair play. Um, okay, that's that's it for Makes me sense. in terms of uh, new music. But um, I, I believe we're in our, our golden oldies section. I'll have to make a golden oldies um, uh, jingle at some point. Jingle. <laughs> yeah, we should. My golden oldie I've chosen is Radiation Vibe by Fountains of Wayne, their debut single. Um, I don't know. I was just listening to them recently and the song, uh, I was listening to this album and uh, it's just a really great song. And I just kind of uh, like press like replay on it like four times. (laughs) Um, It's just a great song. Great. Well, let's play press play on it once. So this is giving Day Fanning in the 90s radio show vibes to me. Yeah. Um, uh, Because I think that's where I've heard it before. And I think the video as well, right? Isn't there a tapping foot at the start of the video? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I haven't watched the video in a long time, but that that, that rings a bell. Um, Yeah, it's just a great song from a great band, you know, like 
since um since uh, Adam Schleisinger died during uh the pandemic I've just found myself going back and listening to Fountains of Wayne a lot um and just sort of like renewing my my love for that band like I really really do love that band and I loved him as a songwriter and um yeah it's just a just a great song I don't know if it was like a huge hit or not but like it could come out now and be a hit you know it's just yeah it's kind of timeless yeah yeah cool old school what's your golden oldie well my golden oldie is actually related to a podcast we did recently on the klf Mm. it's not the klf but because i have been listening to their albums and uh, well specifically chill out and some of their big singles they had some awful stuff as well in fairness but i've um, listened to the chill out album uh once or twice as well while yeah, working nice. and it's real good yeah really it's good. cool um well so as a result of doing the podcast uh stevie g from cork uh noted dj uh sent me a copy of the klf's book or the book john higgs book the klf chaos yeah. magic and the band who burned a million pounds he said he picked it up uh, for free uh, outside a library and he was sending it on and i can recommend the book so uh, lovely. yeah i can recommend the book i'm halfway through it at the moment i'm really enjoying it it's kind of it what, I, what we didn't really cover in the podcast is kind of the uh what would you call it some of the more fantastical elements around the klf about discordian um tropes and and the kind of um ideologies around um maybe some of the things that they were doing in terms of nihilism and discordianism and stuff like that and there's a really interesting uh, story in this book that is while it covers the events that actually happened it also talks about the the randomness of it all and and uh, the mm. ideologies that could possibly be part of it or maybe aren't but it makes for a really interesting book um and at one point in the book um he talks about what time is love the klf song and talks about a song that i love that i only heard about a year and a half ago originally by ann clark it's called our darkness and apparently it was a direct influence for the main riff in what time is love so uh, our darkness and clark was kind of uh mid 80s and 1984 was this track uh was released it's kind of a punky techno new wave kind of track and interestingly i think what what um i love about it now is that anyone will hear this now you'll be like oh that sounds a bit like k tempest and um, so it kind of sounds mm-hmm. like k tempest with some electro kind of buzz and i really like it i played this actually at another love story i believe um last year uh, my DJ said so this was this is Anne Clark the song is called Our Darkness that was Anne Clark Our Darkness a song from Joined Up Writing from 1984 I believe Anne Clark is still going is still an artist uh, making music has uh, recently made some music in uh, aid of uh, 
Ukraine as well. So uh, still at it, and that's great to see. Yeah, and one uh, an artist I want to delve a bit more into something interesting going on there. Um, and yeah, one for a reminder for myself and for anyone else who's interested to have a listen deeper. So yeah, um, we have some plans in in the future, um, which in, in the near and present future, by the time our next uh, episode comes out, we shall uh, we shall have possibly done a real life event um, with the big romance. Uh, more about that soon. We're going to be doing a series of listening parties, um, and the first of which will be happening at the end of October. We'll be announcing that very soon. So uh, listen now, we'll, we'll be doing a podcast related to that soon. So once we have all the details properly confirmed, we'll let you know what the story is. But we're basically planning on having little uh, listening parties in the big romance every month for uh, the next uh, while. So yeah, we'll let you know what the album and uh, artists we're going to be discussing and and listening to on that night will be and where you can get tickets and all that kind of stuff very soon. Um, in the meantime, um, what about uh, what's consuming you? Anything else that you've been uh, listening, watching, enjoying recently? Um, so I watched, I finally watched I May Destroy You. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, Hello. I'd never watched it. I just sort of put it off because of the the topic, I guess. And I saw a lot of people saying that it, it did, in fact, destroy them. Um, but yeah, I sat down on Saturday and just watched the whole thing uh, as though it was a film. And uh, it was excellent. It was like just just as great, if not better than everyone said it was. I thought it was great. I think uh, Michaela Cohen, that's her name, isn't it? She's just like my god like what a talent what an incredible actor as well as writer just amazing so yeah so watch that um watched what else have i been watching i've been listening to the hunger games on audiobook um which i've been enjoying that's kind of like my my going to sleep um uh audiobook at the minute uh although twice i've had like quite intense dreams about like being in the hunger games so i might need to i might need to switch that out because <laughs> I, I was listening to um uh mort the terry pratchett book which i finished and loved and will be uh kind of reading more in the Discworld series definitely but um I was like, oh, what else is a kind of fantasy? Oh, I, t- I tend to read reread The Hunger Games every couple of years. I'll do that, but maybe not before bed. Um, and what else? Hmm. I think that's probably it. Bake Off is back. That's exciting. Um, I was I'm in a sweepstakes, and the person that I had in my sweepstakes went home in the first week. So um <laughs> that's that. Okay. <laughs> that's that, I suppose. It, it yeah. worked out How well for you? you then. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think there was a lot of other albums I didn't get to discuss that I've enjoyed this month. Autremont, they mentioned, I mm-hmm. uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, Lorraine James, Gentle Confrontation. We didn't we didn't get to chat about Maya Sophia yet. Uh, Daika, mm-hmm. another producer's album that I really enjoyed. Um, just I was it was touch and go between that and another album I was going to discuss this week, so I left that off. Um, there's a beautiful, beautiful Rachel Lavelle song. Um, mm. I think I think is it called Big Dreams as well? Yeah, it is, and so it's like Dream Big and Big Dreams and Big um, Dreams. So uh, I didn't include it because I didn't want to repeat myself because I know we're going to be talking about Rachel's album in uh, November, p- presumably. Um, For sure, because it's a big one. Uh, I really enjoyed the Chemical Brothers album, a uh, new one, uh, surprisingly good. Didn't it's, even know it happened. Yeah, the first first half of it is like uh, it kind of reminds me of like a cool like a live set, like a Daft Punk, like live set. It's very much like them doing a live thing. And then it kind of settles mm-hmm. a bit. Also, I really enjoyed the Doja Cat singles as well. Um, some really good yeah, stuff there. Too. That's been yeah. a lot of fun. And then uh, I'm going to do my regular uh, tracks of the month um, shortly in the next few days. Other than that, watch a great movie called Theatre Camp. If you haven't seen it, uh, really good. It's just out now. I want to go see Stop Making Sense, the 4K thing, but I have to figure yeah. out when I can have time to do it. But other than that, most of September was uh, the Fringe Festival. Did a lot of Fringe Festival shows. Um, Malaprop's show Hot House was brilliant. I, I think it won Best Production in the Fringe Awards uh, a couple of days ago. So we could see that. Really enjoyed King of All Birds. Uh, Martin Knight's show about um, uh, myths and birds and uh, Ireland and aerial photographs. Uh, really interesting. And then 
uh, on a music tip in a way, a dance piece called Mosh about the art of moshing. Just a really, really great uh, dance uh, show all about the importance of moshing, how it works and what it is and the culture around it. And then let's see some comedy as well to find Irish uh, comedians, Fiona Frawley, who was in the fringe and a uh, really good show. And then Peter McGann, of course, in Vicar Street, uh, an absolutely we ended riotous up sitting show. together. For yeah, that. yeah. We did even so, know that we were going to it. Yeah, it was so it was funny. Great. We ended up sitting pretty much right beside each other. It's so funny. Yeah, um, yeah. Peter McGann's show. Um, if you think that a comedian who has spent time um, building their profile with uh, characters can't do stand up, you'd be wrong in the case of Peter McGann. He's oh, he's he's so a real chaos much. merchant at the moment. Have you seen the center thing he's doing? The center oh, chicken set rolls. I love I'm it like, so much. <laughs> It's like three different videos about the same thing. I'm like, he's gone a I bit know, mad. It's I know, great. he's bullying I Centra. I love it. Yeah, his show was so, so, so good. I saw him the week after I saw James A. Coster and like James A. Coster was incredible. But I'd, I'd really put the two shows up there together. Like in terms, it's definitely in terms of how much I laughed. Um, he was he was brilliant. He was really, really, really great, great and really took a took a swing at the kind of um, the modern like. <laughs> Oh, it's uh, you know, I'd get kind. Of, he's he did a a video about it recently as well. He's like, oh, I couldn't do what you do, you know. I'd be cancelled with the things I say, and you know, he had his he has his character who who kind of you know portrays that style of comedian. So, yeah, it was really really great. Thought it yeah, was a brilliant show. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm taking the piss out of um well known, um, piss poor uh, beer brands. <laughs> Well. Yeah, yeah, and like his his Irish bu- his book of like how to be a like a big feckin' Egypt or something that he was ring- reading from was like oh was so so good. He took a lot of very subtle swings at other people, and with the beer company, sometimes a bit less subtle, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. it was really really great. Yeah, and it was one of those gigs as well. It was great because anytime he'd mention like where he's from, a whole group in the crowd over there would yell. Or if he mentioned anything to do with his day job as a, a an advertising copywriter, there was like a group of what sounded like about 40 people who'd obviously come from his job as well. Yeah. So he had a real <laughs> sense of like, everyone's here to like support him and you know, that he's he's a great lad. So, he is yeah, indeed great. a great lad. Fair play to him. Yeah. Um, a great show. I would encourage you to go see Peter McGann. Um, and uh, follow his comedy for sure. Mm. Um, other than that, uh, in terms of TV, uh, I've been I've been uh, vacillating towards um, really gentle, which is the Detectorists, mm. the BBC TV yes. show. Yes, I finished it all last it? night. I will say though, it's what this, did I talk about this already? What's going on with him and his wife? Why are they? Why is she so toxic to him? The wife. She's, she's horrible to him. Do you think so? Yeah, I think she's, she's got fucking a point. horrible to him. She fucking <laughs> is so like negative about his cobby and negative about how, how he is and like negs him the whole time i'm like this is not a good relationship know. you should not be he in does this kiss someone else in the first season yeah and then they just and then she disappears completely that character just no like, she gets pregnant and has a baby no not the not the wife the the other woman who oh her yeah the one that comes in in season one and season two she just disappears then i don't think they, no, she I gets a boyfriend in season two the nazi guy Nazi gold guy. Yeah, but then she goes. She disappears. Doesn't she? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, but that's her. three. Yeah. Anyway. There is also, there's an episode that's not on Netflix. That's a Christmas special. That I did watch, watch that last it's, night. Yeah, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. very, very good. Yeah. So, Detectives is beautiful. They, they, a good way of ruining their dreams after <laughs> season three, but I really enjoyed it all the same. Uh, yeah. Very good. And the other thing I enjoyed a lot, it's very silly. It's very dumb. It's called Hijack. It's Idris Elba's uh, Snakes on a Plane. Oh, yeah. Passenger 57 <laughs> thing. It's, absolutely brilliant uh lots of twists and turns and uh funny um plot twists it's it's uh it's very enjoyable i love a pop boiler it's one of those like everything is happening what's happening on this uh plane it's been there's been it's been hijacked but idris elba is a, a it's a corporate negotiator who interferes the entire time with everybody including the hijackers and he gets away with it they're just like he's just like chanting them the whole time and they're like for some reason they're tolerating him it's brilliantly funny and stupid because he's an absolute chad yeah it's, it's so just funny big old chad he knows everything yeah. and everyone else on the plane yeah. knows nothing it's so funny yeah um very enjoyable though uh, uh seven <laughs> parts as well um so yeah, really enjoyable. I would uh, recommend that. So yeah, that's Great. everything I've been listening, watching, reading uh, this month. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything else there. Yeah, that's it. Um, that's it for me as well. Yeah. What's coming up uh, next week? I'm going to be at Ireland Music Week. I'm doing a uh, hosting a talk about TikTok. So um, if you are around for that, a TikTok, TikTok, yeah. it's a TikTok. <laughs> uh, welcome to free. my TikTok. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be doing that uh, and go see some. I'm going to try and catch well. some talks at Ireland Music Week. I know Key Change are doing a talk. I I went to their talk last year. It was very illuminating. I'll, probably go to that again this year great yeah so in, yeah with, hopefully catch some music as well with that in mind then i don't think we'll be able to do a podcast next week um because mm-hmm. of it um i think we'll have to uh, defer to um seeing people in real life um for once my god sorry the storm has like properly arrived agnes is here it is bucketing anyway sorry stay safe everyone stay away from trees it's it's pretty miserable out, but that's a good time to listen yeah. to music. Oh, Indie Sleaze is happening that's on Friday. It. How could I forget? Indie Sleaze is on. Go. Myself and Louise McSharry playing all of the indie, indie uh, Sleaze hits, blog house, electro stuff, funny. What was the song? I already forgot it. I was like, oh, I must play some Maximo Park. I was listening to your Indie Landfill uh, Juvenalia episode with Anna Zanker. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Alan about, uh, yeah, Indie Landfill. I was like, eh, Maximo Park had yeah. a good song. Definitely at least Play some hives, time. please. Oh, well, I mean, are you coming? I might. I, I'm going to be in town that night. <laughs> oh, so well, then. The, it, like oh, the man. likelihood is is way higher yeah. than what it usually is. Okay. I don't have to leave my Well, couch. I mean, you did come to the last so, one, so whatever. I did. I won't, I did. I won't I, expect I, I, you. I left, a, I left a birthday party for the last one, and this one I could potentially be leaving or bringing with me a uh, a going away party. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, great. Um, I'm looking forward to it immensely. It's uh, selling well, and I'm not just saying that. And uh, yeah, Workman Cellar, Indie Sleaze, 29th of September, Friday night, half it was 11. It a great vibe last time. Highly recommend it. It was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good crack. I cannot wait. Right. That's it from this podcast this week. And um, we'll be back in two weeks. We had a special, I believe, and more news on our upcoming events if you are intrigued. Um, also, I started the broadcast list, as I said, on Instagram for 909. So you can, if you're an Instagram fiend, you can find us there. Obviously, mailing list is a great place for us to find out what's going on with us. And even better, Discord through the Patreon, five or a month. Come and support us. Come and support yourself. Find a new community. We started yeah, a new music, music league, league this week. Um, everyone is sharing uh, a song from... The first gig they ever went to, and uh, it makes for a very weird playlist. <laughs> what was your song? What did you, I haven't I haven't looked at the playlist yet. What was your uh, What was your submission? Well, I can't tell you if you if, if you have if you haven't seen it. I don't can't I can't bias you. But don't don't we see way. who chose things? No, oh. you don't know how music work music league works. No, no, and I never will. I you never might guess will. though. You might guess. You might guess. I may have okay. said it before. Um. Based on age and because uh, if some people have are clearly had their first gig in 2008 and I'm like, oh, my first gig yeah. is way older than that. OK. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Bye, everyone. That's it from the 909 podcast this week. Thanks for listening and tell your friends bye. and uh, and look after yourself in your ears. Bye. Bye. Bye.